Well, Lauren Bursaker is back on set with us. Once again, take a look at what's making headlines. Uh, Lauren, as we were just discussing with Catherine in the business bulletin, we were looking at the proposal to raise a federal minimum wage in the United States to $15 an hour. That has been scrapped by the Senate. What have the papers been saying about this issue? Well, it's a debate, Will, that's been uh, going on in the U.S. for over 10 years, and it's likely to continue making headlines despite the Senate's decision. Take the Washington Post, for instance, which uh, is clearly advocating uh, for this raise. In an op-ed, the paper argues the cost of inequalities generated by wage disparities are much greater than what the raise would cost employers ultimately, uh, with the author reminding us uh, that the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour has, has been the same for over 12 years in the U.S., and I quote, it's so absurdly low that the country effectively has no federal minimum wage at all. Um, the author also reminds us that while some states and cities have set their own minimum wage, there's at least five states which haven't, meaning this federal wage is important. Uh, the article points out that several big companies like Target and Amazon, which happens to own the Washington Post, uh, have already raised their wages to $15 or more, and that a majority of Americans support the measure. It does, however, however, concede that small businesses would struggle to adjust. Now, uh, USA Today gives a very different perspective on this issue and argues that such a wage hike would help big business crush smaller competition. Uh, the author points out that several companies like Amazon have recently come out in support of this uh, hike because they can afford to take the hit, and this will also improve their public image. It's kind of a PR stunt for them. But many businesses, uh, small businesses, however, would simply be forced to close, uh, paving the way for even more dominance by big multinational companies. It's definitely a complex issue uh, that will remain a central uh, sticking point in the U.S. as the minimum wage provision has been scrapped from the budget proposal, but it's not completely off the table. All right, well, let's move on to another major controversy that has the Internet up in arms. In the interest of transparency, I should say I am not impartial here, Lauren. This is about a pasta recipe. I, I knew you would probably get a bit <laughs> rattled by this one. Uh, so what started with a simple pasta dish almost turned uh, into an international diplomatic incident. Uh, as the New York Times published a smoky tomato carbonara recipe. And as you can imagine, Italians and food purists are very mad. Uh, it's not just adding tomatoes, which aren't uh, have no place in the dish according to purists, but the Times also suggested using bacon instead of pork belly, sparking even more indignation <laughs> and uh, calls for uh, an end to this madness. The Guardian here points out that while it's not the first time uh, a twist on Italian dishes has sparked outrage, for instance, pineapple, pineapple. pizza, uh, chicken <laughs> pasta, uh, this specific carbonara recipe came as a real shock to many readers uh, who were wondering if it was fake or satire, despite uh, carbonara being, and I quote, one of the most betrayed Italian recipes, according to the Italian Chefs and Farmers Association. Yeah, just take out the word tomato, uh, carbonara, and there's no problem. Exactly. Um, moving on to another slightly unusual story, this time in India, where an original new road safety uh, campaign has been drawing attention. That's right. And it's not just any road safety campaign. It's one that, for some reason, uh, references the iconic and recently split electronic duo Daft Punk. Uh, it was posted by the Surat City Traffic Police with the quote, no more instant crash instead of crush, uh, and a little message pointing that you don't need to get lucky if you're wearing a helmet, uh, referencing the helmets of the Daft Punk. Probably a good, if a slightly strange way to get the message across, and I wonder whether Daft Punk themselves would approve. Or right, let's look at another uh, effort to communicate with the masses. Uh, heading to Canada now, where an ad posted by the country's spy agency seems to have backfired. An effort, indeed. It's not well. I'm not too familiar with how uh, intelligence agencies usually uh, go about recruiting uh, people, uh, but apparently it, now it happens on Twitter, and it's uh, it's uh, Canada has been doing it using a John Le Carre reference to boot. The only problem was that the quote used in the tweet. You could be the perfect spy, all you need is a cause, uh, comes from A Perfect Spy, which is a novel about a morally bankrupt spy who betrays his colleagues and goes on to spy for Czechoslovakia. Uh, internet users were quick to point out the mistake, at least we assume 
it's a mistake unless Canada uh, willingly wants to recruit double agents. Uh, but it seems more likely that whoever posted this uh, this ad did not read the book. I'm guessing human resources will have fun reading their uh, CVs there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Laurent. Laurent Versica with the look at what's making headlines. Time now for a quick break. And then Live from Paris continues.